there are many challenges facing uh, new Muslims when they embrace Islam, and one of them is how to deal with their anger. And Islam has some very excellent uh, teaching, very profound and wise teaching about how we are to deal with their anger. Not everyone suffers from this problem, but uh, it's very useful for those of us who have had a problem with anger. And I want to share some further words from this uh, excellent book. This is the book I showed in the last uh, video. It's uh, a summary, a distillation of Al-Ghazali's great book, uh, famously called The Revival of the Religious Sciences in English. And The 40 Principles, as this book is called, is a comprehensive distillation of this work in which he explores the spiritual depth of virtually every aspect of Islam. I, I do recommend it. It's very, been a very enlightening and challenging and sobering read for me, that's for sure. And on page 133, there's uh, a short chapter entitled Anger. Anger. So this is going to be about anger, how we deal with our anger. What is anger? And what did the prophet upon whom be peace teach about it? What's the Quran say about it? For it is excellent medicine for those of us who need help in recovering from out of control anger. And the book uh, goes like this. It says, know that anger is a flame taken from Allah's blazing fire that rises over the hearts. Whoever it overcomes has adopted the stock of Satan. For indeed, he is a creature made of fire. Breaking extreme anger is one of the most important matters of the religion. So Islam, of course, is not just concerned with the external works of righteousness, doing the right thing, important though that is. It's also about the heart, cleansing the heart, changing, transforming the heart from something that is unregenerate and hard to something that is beautiful and soft and infused with righteousness, inshallah. So, and Islam has a very uh, sophisticated um, system of medicine, of techniques, of technology to help us be better people and more pleasing to God. And this is just one example of this technology, as I'm calling it. So he says, uh, breaking extreme anger is one of the most important matters of the religion. The prophet upon whom BP said, the fierce, is not the one who can wrestle. The fierce is the one who controls his self when angered. So this is the, the better man who control himself when angered. He also said, anger spoils faith like aloe spoils honey. Now, I didn't know what this word means. I had to look it up on Wikipedia. It's interesting, the etymology of the word uh, aloe is derived, it says, from the Arabic word aloe, meaning bitter, and shiny substance and there's also a very similar hebrew word and of course it's used uh in medicine uh had lots of applications there but in this context if it spoils if anger spoils faith like aloe spoils honey it's the bitterness of aloe spoils the sweetness of honey and anger is like that it spoils he also said no one has ever become angry except that he was on the brink of hell and no one has ever become angry except that he was on the very edge of hellfire. Speaks for itself. It's an extraordinary statement. A man once said, O messenger of Allah, what is the fiercest thing in existence? And the prophet replied, the wrath of Allah. And the man asked, what will keep me away from the wrath of Allah? And the prophet replied, that you do not become angry that you do not become angry. Another man once said to Allah's messenger upon whom be peace, suggest some practice to me, but make it simple. So the prophet said, do not become angry. The man asked again a number of times, and each time the prophet repeated, do not become angry. Obviously, he was laser-like focusing into, into this man's principal vice, his anger towards other people. How can the sickness of anger not be grave, the book continues, when its outward manifestation entails violence, cursing and insulting? So these are manifestations of anger, cursing people, uh, insulting people. This gives them an angry heart. How do we how do we deal with this? Well, while inwardly it entails hatred, envy, the harboring of ill will and profanity. 
the intention to expose another or spread his secrets. Joy at the suffering of the person with whom one is angry. Being happy at the suffering of another person if one's angry with them. And sadness when he is made happy. How, how unhappy we are when someone else is made happy. Each one of these filthy characteristics is destructive by itself, writes Al Ghazali. How true this is, how penetratingly real these insights are. So then he asks, how do we break about breaking the anger and containing it when agitated? So we've kind of diagnosed the symptoms, but how do we treat it? You have to do two things to deal with anger, he says. The first of them is breaking it by practice. By breaking it, I do not mean removing it. This is interesting. For its basis cannot be done away with, nor should it be. This is very, you might think, well, how can that be the case? Surely you've got to remove it root and branch. He says, no. On the contrary, if it is done away with, it is an obligation to retrieve it once more because it is the instrument of fighting disbelievers and preventing objectionable conduct and a means to establishing much good. It is like a hunter's dog. Its training is to be disciplined until it is directed by reason and the sacred law. The sacred law, of course, is the Sharia. Thus, it is provoked only when signaled by reason or the sacred law, and likewise abated. So in other words, there's a right use of reason, a right use of anger when it is directed by our reason, by our intelligence, our conscious will, or when it is directed by the divine law, by the, the Islamic law itself. It never conflicts with them, just as the hunter's dog is under its master's directions. This is anger controlled and used for good purposes. This is possible through persevering until you are habituated to patience and forbearance in the face of things that anger you. There's a great sentence. So true anger used wisely never conflicts with reason or the sacred law, with our intelligence and Islamic law, just as the hunter's dog is under the master's directions, under control. And this is possible through perseverance. So you need patience and perseverance until you are habituated to patience. This is a virtue. So you get used to doing it. You become better at doing it. You master it until you are habituated to patience and forbearance in the face of things that anger you. So you don't get provoked by them. Or if you are provoked, you don't manifest it. You don't act out on one's emotions. You don't just get angry with people and lash out or get or do all sorts of things you regret later with your words or your art, your fist or whatever form uh, this kind of acting out of anger takes. So this is, th this, is a, this is a very kind of interesting partial solution through habituation to patience and forbearance. The second way of dealing with anger is the second is controlling anger whenever provoked by containing it. And this is facilitated by knowledge and practice. As for knowledge, it is for a person to know that there is no reason for his anger except his refusal to accept that things happen according to Allah's will and not his own, which is ignorant to the extreme. It is also for a person to know that Allah's anger is greater than his anger, and yet Allah's grace is even greater. How many times has he disobeyed him, God, and broken his commands? So why should he become angry when someone opposes him? Does he think that the conformity of his slave family member or associate to his command is more binding than his conformity to Allah's command? It is most certainly not. As for knowledge, it is for a person to say, I seek refuge in Allah from Shaitan the accursed. I seek refuge from Allah from Shaitan the accursed. Because we will say this many times a day when we pray. For he knows that anger is from 
Satan or Shaitan in Arabic. If it is not abated by that, then he sits down if he was standing or lies down if he was sitting, as has been narrated. And Al-Ghazali then quotes, uh, as in the Hadith of uh, Abu Dar, who said, the messenger of God upon whom BP said to us, if one of you becomes angry while standing, he should sit down until the anger abates, until it passes, the emotion passes. If he does not, he should lie down. Okay. So, um, as has been narrated, because changing one's position, physically changing one's position, is effective in abating anger. It actually works. Even going for a, a good, strong walk can help if one is worked up, just getting out there in nature, walking around, having some exercise, changing one's bodily position through walking can also be effective, I think, for many, for many things. If it is still not abated, then he should perform ablution. The prophet upon whom BP said, verily, anger is from Satan, and Satan was created from fire. Fire is put out by water, so if one of you is angry, he should perform ablution, end quote. He also said, quote, surely anger is a hot coal in the heart of the son of Adam. This is a great poetic way of saying anger is this burning thing in our hearts. The son of Adam, that's all of us. Do you not see the redness of his eyes and the bulging of his veins in his neck? Whoever senses anything of that within him should put his cheek to the ground, put his forehead to the ground. This is an allusion, allusion to the plate, to placing the dearest part of the body that's our head, obviously, on the lowest place in order to break one's pride. For it is without doubt the foremost cause of anger, our pride, our arrogance, our ego is what lies just underneath this anger. It's what gives it fuel like a fire raging within us so that a person may realize that he is nothing more than a humble slave for whom pride is not fitting is that a lovely image a humble slave we are that's all we are before our creator and pride is hardly fitting before our lord before our god allah's messenger upon whom be peace said verily through forbearance a man will attain the same level of reward as someone who stands in prayer at night and fasts during the day and will be recorded as being of overwhelming might despite having control only over his household extraordinary he also said whoever contains his fury despite having the ability to unleash it if he wanted if he wanted allah will fill his heart with security and faith on the day of resurrection beautiful also, he said, there is no act of concealment more beloved to Allah than for a slave to contain his fury and swallow it down. There is no slave that does so except that Allah fills his heart with faith. There is no slave that does so except that Allah fills his heart with faith faith a beautiful final sentence uh in that chapter entitled anger uh in this marvelous book um i think i might read uh, a few more chapters of it uh just out of the, the sheer pleasure of sharing some profound spiritual and practical wisdom uh, both the outer and the inner are addressed in this uh, uh adapted summary of uh, al ghazali's magnum opus his great work the revival of the religious sciences so there we are until next time hopefully that was of help